How needed was that? How needed was it? How needed in terms of uh, just to do everything that you knew you knew that you could do, but to put it on display. Um, I don't know if need is the right word. I think, you know, we always try to go out there and execute the best of our abilities. I think bathing, um, I guess confidence builder, understanding that our young guys um, who have a lot more experience now, but just keep on gaining confidence and building momentum uh, as the season goes forward and understand that the games that we have here on out are very uh, crucial. So. Is your post rate like a 50? <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think it gets up really too much. I actually need to scoot closer. Jerry told me y'all yeah, can't hear me sometimes. <laughs> Hey, JT, Saturday, was that all entirely the result of the defense doing something different, or were your receivers doing something different, allowing you to get the ball down the field? Um, I think it was just more the defense doing something different, because, um, you know, we took a shot, missed one, got past interference, um, and then we took the same shot again, we completed it, and then we, we stopped seeing that coverage. So. That was something I was trying to express. It, it was a lot predicated on the coverage and being that I think teams knew that we were definitely capable of doing that and that we were going to try to do that, but trying to prevent us, and that's why they played off of us. Um, and that's what we saw the second half. Like we, the middle of the field was closed, so it was, they didn't want that to happen again. JT, when you're a quarterback, and take me through that, though, and you all run that, and then uh, Curtis runs like a – for one, in other words, maybe a skinny post or whatever he ran with a post, and you see it wide, see it breaking open. What is your thought process then? You know, I know it all happens in a second and a half, but what, what do you, do you take, settle to yourself, settle down, make make sure. I mean, take me through your thought process there um, when you see it finally break open. You know. Well, actually, a lot of times I don't, I don't throw it when he breaks open. I throw it yeah. before he gets open. So it's more just throwing to a spot and understanding the landmarks we have. Uh, we talked about with passing game is a lot of timing and uh, spacing. So the spots on the field that he knows where he needs to get and me just placing the ball there so he's able to run under it and uh, could do something with it after he catches it. Um, so I think that's more of it, if anything, is seeing his angle um, before he breaks open and then being able to put it in a spot where he can get it. Yeah, but, but mainly what I'm saying is you, you see the coverage breaking exactly like you'd like to see it break at that moment. Yeah. And then you're thinking, is Curtis seeing the same thing I am, right? I mean, what? How does that? Yeah. So, what's the tail? What's the sign there that tells you? Yeah, y'all are on the same page. Um, Do you wait for that sign, I guess, before you wing it? I mean, not really. Uh, I think. I don't know. I think it's part of practice. Um, you know, executing yeah. it in practice a couple of times, knowing that we wanted this certain coverage. Um, and then when we see it, and that was the thing, if the coverage was different, then I would have, my read would have been different and the ball would have went to somebody else. But um, I don't know, I think it's just more execution and practice and seeing it so it all clicked. Mm -hmm. JT, there are a couple plays, it seems like every week, where it almost seems inevitable that you're going to get sacked. And sometimes you, or most times, you find your way out of it. Why are you so good at that? Um, honestly, those are two MAs on my part. Um, there's some. It brought hot, it brought it late. Um, they got me twice, and those are the ones I was able to escape. But um, I don't know. I just feel like uh, I try to do my best. Uh, I understand that the old line, they have a really tough job uh, blocking the guys uh, up front, and I try to tell them, just give me you know, two, two and a half seconds, and I'll get it on my hands as quick as possible, or I'm going to run or scramble or things like that. So um, I just try to do my best to make sure we don't have those negative plays. and. Uh, it's more of anything, just preparation and practice with Coach Beck, uh, doing bags and feeling pressure. Uh, we do that a lot in practice. I think your next touchdown is going to break Drew Brees' all-time Big Ten responsible for a record for a kid from Texas. Drew Brees is from Texas. Uh, yeah. I would imagine there's something special there. Um, I mean, that's just crazy to think about. That. I always hmm. say this, if you would have told me, I was a sophomore in high school at JT when we were doing this. I would have called you a liar. Um, or I just wouldn't have believed you. But um, no, that's the craziest thing. Well, like I said, uh, it's going to be uh, an honor that uh, definitely I'm not going to you know, take that lightly. It's great. Sorry, JT, has it just been the, the coverage 
last week, or have you seen the your wideouts, you know, kind of get over that maybe those growing pains and that plateau they hit for a couple of weeks and take off again? To, is that something you seem like you saw development going in practice? But yeah, what was the difference? Is it just the coverage when you get to the game? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's a that's a thing. Uh, I think here, you know, we all talk about Ohio State, and I think you know we're very explosive out there on perimeter as receivers and also even our tight end Marks Ball and AJ, I think they do a great job of getting over as well. But also too that there's people trying to stop us. So I think that's something that, you know what I'm saying, we don't think about a lot of times like, you know, they have the Big Ten ain't what it used to be. It's not one of those things and I remember in two thousand fourteen, uh, you know, we were scoring fifty points, you know, for a little streak there. Uh, but I think we have great teams in the Big Ten and uh, it's a lot of times it's a really slug it out type of game and it wasn't on a Saturday, but I think um, if anything, Nebraska, I think uh, they challenge us like that. They could uh, challenge us on the perimeter. I think we just won the battle oftentimes, which I was really confident. But did, the, but did those young guys have to learn how to win those battles maybe? Did they have to lose some? I don't know. That's the thing. I don't, when you, if you would tell me to do, you know, in high school games, they would really lose them. I would. I wouldn't say yeah. I think um, there was times where we were uh, having time with, you know, spacing and things were uh, kind of on top of each other as far as routes. I think a lot of times we don't think about that, that, you know, God may look open, but there's two guys covering, or one guy covering two people, and that's just based on spacing. So I think that was part of it, uh, being able to uh, get better at that if, if I had to say something, if anything. But, did you, did you there, there, did you, there were a couple, uh, Mike Weber had like 71 yards, but there were a couple runs of a third and two where he spun, got the, got the first down, mm -hmm. the touchdown run, he broke a tackle. What do you see in his development? How, how's he come along? I, was, I like where he's going. Um, I think Coach Offer does a great job getting him prepared to play each and every week. I think he does a great job with our running backs in general. Um, but also, too, I think he understands the, um, you know, what we ask of him is, like when I look at him on his third and one, he'll be like, hey, go get the first down for us. And he's able to do that. Um, and I think he's really grown up a lot um, this past year through the offseason. Now even during the season, I think uh, he's grown up. So um, I like where he's headed. And he had such huge shoes to fill. And, and could you talk about what pressure he must have felt to to fill in, to take over for, for uh, Zeke? Yeah, I think um, there was pressure from the outside. Um, but as far as internally, I don't think we uh, put pressure on him um, really. I think we understand that, you know, Zeke and Mike Weber are two different people. They're going to be two different players. They have two different approaches to the game. And, uh, and so I think uh, we try to compare people and, you know, try to place people in other people's shoes. But I don't think that's fair to uh, both individuals because they're two different people. Um, but we know that confidence in them, absolutely. And um, just understand that we're going to have to grow up fast and be able to contribute to our team. The three tail pass to uh, Terry McLaurin, it seemed like that was kind of a scramble play. Mm -hmm. um, just talk about what you saw in that play, how it all came about. I know he was in the back of the end zone. And for Terry, he seems like a guy that you guys could be dependent on to make some plays. How big is a play like that in traffic, holding on to the ball, everything that happened there, getting him going? Um, I think it was good. Uh, I actually, Reed was I was playing on the boundary. They did a good job covering um, the guys and having the boundary. So uh, the protection held up and was able to be, or allowed me to scramble out to the left. And um, we basically went to our scramble rules that we have, mm -hmm. uh, and he was able to get open. I think, like you said, the main thing was that uh, being able to get hit and take that shot and go on the ground and uh, protecting the football. I think that was something that was really good. But yeah, so um, that's one of the things that anybody could have done. James Clark could have done that, Corey Smith. And so, I mean, um, that's why I'm so confident in the guys we have right now because uh, we have a lot more experience and understand situations. I think we're getting better at that as well. Um, so I think um, we're all growing uh, as passing off. JT, if you were taking a test right now and the, uh, you had to write a definition down and, and the word was hybrid back, what would be what would you write down as a definition? Uh, or you mean to write down as a definition? A person that could do it all on offense. Uh, I see I mean, you're getting that my man Curtis. Yeah. Uh, 
Yes, he, he's a person that can definitely do a lot of things on the offensive side. He, he catches snaps and runs for the ball. Um, you know, he catches passes downfield. He runs that side tackles, outside tackles. Uh, yeah. Person that can do it all offensively. Is Curtis living up to? I mean, are y'all finding a new thing almost every week to get him involved? I mean, uh, just what, what's been the evolution of that position just this year in your mind? Because you're the guy getting him the ball. Right. Um, I think. I don't know. I don't. We're not really creating new ways for him to get the ball. I think uh, within our offense, we're running uh, plays, but that's that's how our offense works. So I think the things that we really hang our hat on is somebody that can win one-on-one -on -one and X, uh, have an H back, <coughs> that can do a lot of things and have a running back as far as our skill positions. Uh, and so with that, I think that is something that uh, we're kind of, you know, we find those guys out um, and he's just fitting that role that we have. Hey, Jason, after you your guys have lost to uh, Penn State, I think Urban Meyer addressed the team um, about uh, whether or not, challenged the team, whether or not everybody was doing 100% of what they could mm -hmm. to get this team to win football games. And uh, after you guys had that impressive win on Saturday, a lot of people were talking about how they did extra things, whether it was watching extra film, more treatment, you know, all that stuff. I was just wondering, as the leader of this team, how did you take that message from Coach Meyer a few weeks ago, and how did you see this team respond? And do you think that that has anything to do with the big turnaround you guys had on Saturday? Um, I believe so. I think uh, Coach Meyer does a great job of kind of looking at a perspective of things and understanding that um, the way you look at things can definitely alter um, you know, the outcomes of certain things, which in our case would be a football game. So um, I think with that, I think it really, um, for our young guys, really had them take a look at themselves, have a self-evaluation type of deal and see, did I do all I could do? And if I didn't, why, why not? Why did I do that? Um, because when we think about it, uh, we come here to get a great education and come here to play football. And that's why we're on scholarship. So uh, if you're not, um, you know, if you're not doing, you know, the best you can or the most you can in order to uh, make us successful, then I think, I don't know, I think you're hurting us. So uh, I think as a team, I think we definitely um, took a hold of that and got better. KT, I'm just curious. Uh, you're on the sideline, you see a pick six, mm -hmm. you got what does that do for the offense? What is, what's your reaction when you see that? Does, can that really affect what you guys are doing? Um, uh, I don't know. I guess I go run and grab my helmet. Um, <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Um, if anything, I think maybe the coaches uh, may change the play we have called. Being that we were expecting a certain field position and then it flips. Uh, but me personally, in my mindset, um, I think it also depends on the uh, where the ball is at. So if it's red zone, then you know, red zone passing, and then you know, middle field, run game, things like that. Would but, you like to see those guys on the other side of the ball, your side of the ball, maybe? Molly Cooker. Yep. No. No, he's good where he's at. <laughs> <laughs> I know he got good hands. I, I got where you're going, but nah, he's, he's good at DB. Um, I think that's where he's the best for us. I think his, I think his question is, yeah. is uh, now you're still on the bench. You, you guys didn't get the ball until seven and a half minutes ago oh, in the first quarter. That's how he picked it. And, and, then, and, just, and when you go out there, you've already yeah. scored a touchdown. It's one less you guys have to score. Oh, that's yeah. burn. I'm not bothered by that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that's a, one of the great things is that uh, they're like fighting for the ball. They talk about, uh, you know, who got the better hands in the DB room. I give them my opinion, which is Malik. Uh, I told my classmate Gary on that, yes, Malik Hooker has better hands than DB. He's a little upset by that, but it's okay. Um, yeah, but no, I don't, I mean, me personally, I don't, you know, get a sigh of relief or anything because they scored a touchdown. Um, like I always said that every time we get the ball, I'm trying to score, so it didn't matter if they scored, you know, we get the ball. I still have intentions on going to score. So, is my question to play offense? Pushing your play offense? Nah, Gary, I'm the one talking about he need to catch inside. Nah, I told him you need to calm down and just worry about you know what I'm saying you playing man the whole game. So he doesn't like joke, like, want to like take like a screen pass or something because he weaves weaves in on a traffic like it's nothing. Yeah, no, Malik, you don't. 
I don't think he, well, he never came to me saying he wanted to play offense, but I would probably shut that down real quick, too. <laughs> hey, Jay, Jay, a couple um, more questions. Urban has said, and so you're not, I'm not asking you to reveal state secrets or anything, but Urban has said they changed the process of the, the script that you start the game with. So I'm wondering if things have felt smoother, if the play calling has felt different. At the start of the game, did you notice something extra there? Um, not really. Um, I think, uh, I don't know, I feel like, you know, they asked me uh, what I feel comfortable opening the game with, um, run pass, um, different things to just get our offense going. And, uh, you know, I get my little two cents, but um, at the end of the day, uh, it's up to Coach Martin, Coach Martin, Coach Beck, uh, to really, you know, depending on where the ball is at and things like that, uh, put us in a position to get to a smooth start. Um, but I don't know, I, I guess that must have been a coach's thing because it wasn't anything different from my point. Um, you guys have a game where you break out like that, and marquee game, prime time. Now you go against team lesser known Maryland on the road what's the how do you make sure you guys don't take a step back you know you build off of that what's I guess what's the message you would give going forward this week um just understand you have to take the same approach that um, I don't I'm gonna take any team uh, for granted or see them as lesser because like I said the Big Ten is one of the, I think the conferences now where you get stuck upon it you get beat anytime so um Understand that the same approach that we took into the top ten matchup against Nebraska is the same approach we need to take in uh, for Maryland on the road. So I think that's one of the things that we're going to talk about this week. JT, you guys are uh, busy student athletes. Will you have time to vote tomorrow? Yes. Uh, How do you squeeze it in? I have a class that was uh, canceled in order for me to go vote, and I'm registered to vote in Ohio. So, bang. <laughs> this, this election, um, and you're voting for him. Is this <laughs> is this election? Let me. Is this election um, something that guys have discussed at all? Has it come up? What's it? What I mean, it's been obviously a very one that people have discussed. What's it been like with you guys? Um, yeah, we talk about it. Um, there was a time we had the Patriot Week in the mm -hmm. summer, um, where we learned a lot about uh, the election and voting and things like that. Um, but I think it comes up in conversation every now and then. I don't think it's something that, you know, is constantly throughout the locker room, but I, I've heard it come up right now. Could it ever be if, I mean, obviously groups of people have different political views. Could anything on the outside like that ever have any effect on the team if there are guys who, I'm voting for this guy or I'm voting for this other person, that it could create a disagreement at all? No, I don't think so. I think, um, I think we have a team that understands that that's part of what makes our country great is that people are... Or, um, they have that opinion, and that's perfectly okay. I think um, that's something great that we have as Americans, and uh, understand that that has uh, something to do with your personal life and personal opinions. But I don't think it's going to interfere with the way we play. All right, thanks, thanks for you. Thanks, 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 God bless.